Guess what, guys? Today is the day the Pumpkin Ball Python reveal. That's right, they've hatched out. I told you, I was so excited about this project. I've been working on it for years, and finally the first babies have crawled out, and I am blown away. I cannot believe how awesome they are. Remember when we cut this clutch just a few days ago? Oh my gosh, oh, whoa, whoa. What in the freaking world is that? Wow, look at that one too. Super reduced. This looks like the same type of gene as the first one here. It, guys, it is so clean. It is ridiculous. Oh my gosh, this pumpkin gene is gonna be a banger. And of course, this is the dad. I've showed him a bunch. This is the pumpkin male, but it's actually a cinnamon pumpkin. Now, what it was actually bred from is a cinnamon male that was bred to a pinstripe female. And when this popped out, I said, wait a second, this doesn't look like a normal cinnamon to me by any stretch. It had that really beautiful kind of orangey look to it. Now, we actually produce a bunch of worlds first. Almost every year we do, and a lot of people do, to be honest with you. But base morphs are really difficult. There's difference between combo morphs and a base morph. With a base morph, it's actually much more rare. And to be totally honest with you, the last base morph that we produced was the Sunset Ball Python. Now we actually imported a baby male Sunset Ball Python way back in the day, cost us $70,000. And we thought for sure it was gonna be a co-dominant or incomplete dominant animal. Turned out that it was a recessive animal. Took us you know, six or seven years before we finally proved it out. Of course, right around that same time, we actually did produce the scaleless ball python that was a base morph as well and that's again not something that's easy to do so it's been quite a few years since we actually had a base morph like the pumpkin ball python prove out so we're just super excited to be kind of pioneering this thing and figuring it out that's the fun part right we're still trying to figure out what is going on so what do you say we go over and take a look at these babies and we'll go ahead and do the reveal and let me know what you guys think about them down in the comments and here's all these babies and I tell you what I'm sitting here trying to figure this all out myself because there is a tremendous amount of diversity but I really think that the pumpkin really bleeds through with some of this stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and start with this animal right here this is actually a super entry that is not a pumpkin okay it's just a super entry ball python right here now this is the super entry pumpkin and you can certainly see the difference of that pumpkin influence with this animal I mean wow that is absolutely incredible how those two animals are the same genetics just one is a pumpkin gene and I've got a few other examples in here that I'm going to show you take for instance this one here is actually a super entry pinstripe right we've produced these in the past and they're absolutely beautiful but you add the pumpkin gene in and oh my gosh the orange just pops it cleans up a tremendous amount and it is really truly a stunning animal. Moving on to the same ilk, basically. It's so cool that we have the combos here that we can show what it looks like with and without the pumpkin. This happens to be a super enchi spinner right here. And then take a look at these three right here. These would be the super enchi spinner pumpkins and they don't look as orange obviously but they certainly clean up that animal unbelievable i mean the amount of cleanliness that pumpkin gene adds to the spider gene and that pinstripe gene and just the contra oh my gosh that is absolutely ridiculous so we're really able to see the difference in the influence of what that pumpkin gene is actually doing i couldn't be more excited with the way these turned out and then this one is kind of on its own this is what i'm almost positive would be actually a enchi a spider a cinnamon and a a pumpkin. That's right. That looks like all those genes. Because an Enchi Cine spider actually isn't as clean as this animal and it has some orange coming through. So I tell you, we actually rocked it with this clutch of eggs right now. I cannot be more happier with what ended up hatching out. Now the question is, is what do I do with them? And I'll keep you guys up to date on the way these guys shed out and grow. Because I have a feeling that when these guys get 300 grams, oh my goodness, they are going to be incredible. But wasn't that incredible to reveal a brand new base gene, the pumpkin gene. I tell you what, we've got four more clutches the hatch and I am pretty darn excited about it. And by the way, welcome to the vlog Reptile Army. I hope the start of your day is absolutely fantastic. And speaking of Reptile Army, do me a favor, join the army over at reptilearmy.com. We're about to drop six or eight new designs next week, hopefully if everything goes well. So there's going to be some new stuff for everyone and we're going to continue to do it. Again, it's all for education, reptilearmy.com. So I just found out that Mike has a fear of spiders. The fearless man has a fear. What the hell? So we gotta snap this out of here because Mike, he's so burly, he's so strong, he's like a he's like a red oak. He said that he wants to do the Brazilian black. There's no there's no way I'm touching that no. thing. There's Dude. no way I'm touching that thing. Why? Why? That thing's fast! Okay, Mike. Here we go. The Brazilian I'm black. I'm shaking. You like, don't know. actually shaking. You are? Yeah. All right, how about you just touch it? No, I don't want just to touch it. No, I don't want to get hairs on Just put it in my hand. What do you mean? Just, you don't want to get hairs. Just, just, 
Just All right. do it. Are your hands sweaty? Because if they just, are, it's, it's Nike. Just it's, do it. If, I think it's, it's, if your hands are sweaty, it's not good for the skin. Here we go. Oh, I'm dude. just gonna let a foot touch your thingy. Look at that. I don't want it to touch my dude. It feels like a cloud, man. No, stop. You, I, oh, okay. Here we go. Whatever you do, don't drop. Ow, my back is spazzing. Ow, one of my vertebrae is going out of whack. Oh, I'm gonna make the other one go out of whack. Breathe. Remember to breathe. If you don't breathe, you just pass out. Look at it, man. It's like I'm looking at it, and it's a spider sitting in my hands, and I'm freaking out. Every Look, muscle. Maybe if you get further away, he'll be better. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> there you go. Oh, please don't move on me. Get somebody take it. Get comfortable with the uncomfortable. I'm not comfortable. I'm gonna pass out by a few more minutes. All right. I don't even know how to grab it. Honestly. Just, just like that. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Yeah. I, I look at that. Wasn't that bad? What's wrong? Look at him. I hate fighters. It's been about a week since we've got Grits, the white throat monitor, and he is just absolutely a wonderful animal. Love these guys. There's actually four species of rock monitor. These guys are the ones that are from South Africa. I actually had the pleasure of seeing these in the wild when I was in South Africa once, and it's absolutely incredible. Now, these guys are one of the bigger ones. I mean, they will get really large, you know, up to maybe six foot, but most of them stay about four, four and a half foot. And interestingly enough, their main diet is really more bugs than it is protein from meats and stuff like that. And about 80% of their diet in the wild, believe it or not, is centipedes. That's right, centipedes. Can you imagine these guys eating centipedes all the time? But in captivity, they will eat the occasional rodent and the occasional meat, but you don't want too much of it because again, they'll get like the fatty liver disease, right? They get too big. And I'll be totally honest with you, this guy's a little bit chunky right now, so it's probably been on more of a meat diet than it actually should have been before we got it. So we're gonna be keeping it mainly on a bug diet with the occasional meat, maybe once every other week we'll give him a little bit of meat in the meantime he's going to be on primarily a bug diet so we'll feed him obviously not millipedes or centipedes but we're going to feed him cockroaches we're going to feed him some super worms you know different things like that regardless really cool animal super amazing i will tell you these guys don't smell like maple syrup like the black throat monitors and speaking of black throat monitors and of course we have flapjack the black throat monitor right here and he does not like that camera too much he's calming down but still not super calm definitely don't want to get bit by this guy there's no doubt about that but as it gets bigger it's gonna absolutely tame out but look at this little monkey right here look at him he's got such an attitude now this is the largest of the four species of rock monitor but unlike the white throats that come from South Africa these guys come up north into Tanzania and these are like I said the largest they can get seven or eight foot long and up to 60 pounds and once again unlike the white throat monitor they will eat some bugs here and there but their primary diet in the wild is actually different animals you know it's gonna be birds rodents stuff like that so these guys are primarily on a meat diet although we give him lots of bugs and stuff like that just to kind of keep him calm but yes he's growing he's starting to mellow out a little bit more and more I still don't want to get bit by this guy that's for sure and what he'll do sometimes is he'll actually start hanging onto your hand with his legs so that when he turns around he'll actually get you which is something I definitely don't want to happen just like that see how he's grabbing onto my hand so I can't get away from him and then if he turns around now I'm gonna be in big trouble right and I have a bad reaction to this particular particular guy's venom for sure so I don't want anything to happen but I'm telling you what when he gets older when he's you know six foot seven foot whoa 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 whoo I tell you he is a smart little monkey he holds on with those back feet and he's like I'm gonna get you I'm gonna get you it's okay little buddy and like I said the reason this guy is called flapjack is he actually does smell like maple syrup like I said the white throat monitors don't have that smell I have no idea why these guys smell like that but it's absolutely incredible and he is getting so big and so beautiful what an absolutely amazing animal so it's really cool that we have both the black throat and a white throat two of the four species of the rock monitors from Africa I tell you what I love it and I can't wait till this guy is as calm as grits don't have too many colubrid clutches left for first clutches do we um, no, not many. Right. Are you, gonna, are, you start, are you starting to work on second clutches? Yeah. Some of those first ones will probably be doing a shed. What's the soon. thing that you're most excited about? What? What, what, <laughs> what, what, what clutch is like, oh my God, that was so cool. Or, is there, or just none at all. Of the ones that have been laid already? Yeah. Uh, there's a few. Um, obviously, I'm excited for gray bands. Oh yeah, that's have, right. Yeah. It's been a long time since we produced those. I have we have a couple cool corn snake options that uh, we'll see with the different you know scaleless groups and some different um, genes in there. So you know what I'm excited about? No. And she hasn't laid yet. Is she getting close? Is the Mexican pine? Uh, actually, she's doing any time. Any time. So she hadn't laid yesterday. I haven't checked today. That's you know the thing I love about that is that you know we've never produced those before, yep. so this will be the first time. That's what 
I always am excited. I love producing everything, but when we produce something that we've never produced, that's pretty awesome. And they are cool snakes. Yeah, they are. She pretty looks pretty cool. She looks good. I mean, she looked good to me, so we'll okay. see. Well, fingers crossed. So keep up the good work. Hopefully, uh, the first eggs are hatching in less than about two weeks. That's pretty amazing. And speaking of that Mexican pine, let's see if she's laid today. Here she is right here, and she is due any time. Oh, I see some eggs. I see eggs. Oh, my God. I see eggs. Hang on. Let's look and see if she's done yet. Oh, 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 there's not that many good eggs in there, but there are a couple good eggs. Uh, it looks like two or three eggs and then a bunch of slugs. So that's a little bit disappointing, but let's go ahead and pull them anyways. So like I said, it is definitely a disappointment. I was really excited about this clutch because we had never actually produced them before, but we'll go ahead, get her out and we'll see how many eggs she actually does have. Like I mentioned, uh, I don't know, she's a first time female. Sometimes first time females have a little bit of an issue and they are giant eggs. So let's go ahead, get her out of here really quick. Uh, we might have to take these eggs out first. So these are the good eggs right here. We'll go ahead, set them down and then we'll just go ahead, get mama back in here. Looks like she did good as far as laying all her eggs. Absolutely gorgeous snake. There's no doubt about that. Now, again, two good eggs. Look at how big those eggs are, though. I mean, those are giant eggs for sure. But unfortunately, she had two, four, six bad eggs. So she would have had eight fertile eggs if she would have had them all fertile. That would have been an amazing clutch. In the meantime, hey, we've got two. If we hatch out two, I will be super excited. And I would be willing to bet with another year age on her next year, she'll end up laying 100% fertile clutch. So, uh, hey, a little bit disappointing but still the first Mexican pine eggs that I've ever produced. I know this actually seems kind of weird for me, especially because like I've been so slow going and really, really just trying to get him used to my presence. And I'm at a point now where I'm pretty sure he's used to my presence. Uh, mainly because it's like he's, he's more or less angry about me trying to touch him, not necessarily about me being here anymore. So now I'm just trying to touch him and get him used to that and get him kind of breaking of that. Um, I also want him to also realize that my hands and my arms are a place to basically be like a piece of tree, you know, like an arm, like, like, I don't want to grip him or grab him or restrain him. So if he's going to go, I want to push him in and put him in a direction he's going to go and not, not feel like he's going to hurt himself or potentially like stress him out any further. So, uh, uh, it's definitely worth all, all the all the time and effort. He's definitely come 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 a long, long way. I mean, he's still a little bit, a little bit nervous and stuff like that, but Honestly, I, I have I have nothing but faith this guy's gonna be amazing. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video and let me know in the comments what you thought about the pumpkin balls. I am surely excited about it. Over on this side, you can watch an entire playlist of me getting baby snakes. On this side, please do me a favor, hit that subscription button. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.